Um, so some of you may also know this opioid from the, from the standpoint of celebrities, people who have died. And so for example, this is the, the artist known as Prince. He died from uh, an overdose of fentanyl being in his system. And, and this was one of the first deaths really associated with this counterfeit uh, fentanyl that we'll talk about in just a second. Uh, for those of you in a um, more younger demographic, this is Lil Peep. People have heard of him. He's an emo slash rapper. So uh, he actually also died from a combination of Xanax and uh, fentanyl that was found in his system. So even musically, you see this demographic divide where it's actually impacting different generations. And what was happening in these two cases is something that's very, very troubling, which is uh, this counterfeit opioids. So when you have this large opioid epidemic and law enforcement starts to crack down on prescribing on the illicit drug trade, then someone has to fill in the gap when it comes to kind of market uh, demand. And that's what's happened. Essentially, uh, dealers are, uh, raw material providers are using fentanyl to create illicit or counterfeit opioids. So you buy something on the street that says hydrocodone or oxycodone, it actually doesn't have the active ingredient for that drug. It actually is laced with fentanyl because fentanyl is much cheaper to cut um, by the gram and it's much more potent. And if you're a counterfeit producer and you're selling to substance users, your drug has to have an impact or they're gonna know about it. If you counterfeit a sugar pill, you're not gonna have many substance abuser customers coming back to you. So that's why fentanyl is very interesting because it's a reaction to part of the law enforcement component, part of the prescribing component. And it's introducing a new threat uh, in the public space because people need these drugs to keep their habit going. Okay, so for example, this uh, was found by the DEA. It's actually, um, when they did laboratory analysis, it says it's oxycodone, it's printed as oxycodone, but it actually had a research grade chemical that had never been used in humans before, uh, a synthetic fentanyl. Uh, and this is a pill press that you can buy. You can actually buy these off of Alibaba, uh, and you can print your own pills. And then, of course, you can make a lot of money. I think it's for, you know, you can make millions of dollars, basically, on a, just a few hundred grams of this stuff. And again, they're pr printing it to make it look like oxycodone so people abuse it. And then a lot of people like Prince or Little Peep may not even know that they're taking fentanyl, and they die because of that. Uh, and the other thing that's interesting about this epidemic is you see some of the same patterns in our youth and adolescents, which is kind of an area that I focus on within a sub-segment sub, sub of our research. So if you see this uh, graph here by NIDA, it actually shows that prescription drugs or OTC drugs have overpassed illicit drug use in almost all categories, except for marijuana. That means more of our youth and adolescents are um, basically, you know, abusing prescription drugs versus illicit drugs. And I'm... 38 years old now, but uh, grew up in a rough area in Reno Valley when I was in middle school, uh, Riverside area. Um, so if you listen to some of the you know, hip hop scene and all, all the music, it's a very big shift. A lot of hip hop artists used to talk about you know, abusing cocaine, but now people talk about abusing prescription drugs in their rap lyrics. So it's, a, it's kind of a cultural shift as well to this type of form of drug abuse. Uh -huh. 